Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I believe you're doing good and uh, I believe that uh, you're experiencing the hand of God work in your life. And uh, those who are watching me for the first time, this is Evans Francis from Nagpur, India. I'm an evangelist into full-time ministry and I believe that God is uh, going to speak to you through this, uh, through this message. Uh, to be very honest with you, uh, this message has been on my mind for approximately a month but uh, it was taking a lot of time, a lot of time to prepare this message because I know that uh, uh, the devil doesn't want you to know these things and devil will always uh, uh, try to stop the work of God and I believe that uh, through this message God will uh, give you the insight that uh, what you should do and what you shouldn't do and uh, before I share this message, I also want to say one thing very clearly. Like uh, if I come uh, and take uh, points after point that what you should do and what you shouldn't, there will be more than thousand points. But uh, I prayed and the 10 points which uh, God gave me, uh, which I should share with you. And uh, so that I will be sharing. And I know that uh, for you, maybe some other point can be more important than this but uh, for me when I prayed these are the 10 uh, points God gave me and I wanted to share it with you but I'm not saying these are the only points that is dangerous that uh, a Christian must not practice but I believe that there are more than 10 but uh, just to give uh, an insight and I believe through this uh, video God will help you God will help you to to come more closer to him and understand what you should do and what you shouldn't do and this video is not only for Christians I believe that maybe the title is for Christians yes it is for Christians but even if you, you don't believe in Jesus but still you can uh, examine yourself you can ask the same questions and by point by point you can also ask are you doing that and if you're doing that that is not the will of God and it is very important that uh, you be careful about not doing all these things and I believe that uh, that God has an awesome plan and I believe that God has a great plan for you and without wasting a lot of time let us pray Father God we come to thy presence in this wonderful time master Lord we come to the throne of grace Lord I give these people into thy hand their lives into thy hand Lord you speak to your people master you speak to your children master open their open their minds to understand the word of God master I cancel all the disturbances in the name of Jesus through this word master let your kingdom advance master may your king you alone be glorified in jesus precious name we pray amen 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 so those who are watching me for the first time consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so whenever i come live you will be notified and also please pray uh, that uh, internet should work good otherwise i will be cut in between amen so let's come to the word of god 10 dangerous things a Christians must not practice. As I said earlier, if I make points, it will be going over 1000. But it is the grace and mercy of God that uh, you and I will enter into the kingdom, kingdom of God. But uh, these are that I won't say the 10 commandments, um, but I will say that there are, I thought it will be only five, but uh, as the Holy Spirit led me and I reached 10, so I thought, okay, mm -hmm. Why not uh, share make the title as 10 dangerous things and I I ask you to listen it with a humble heart with a learning heart then only Holy Spirit will be able to speak to you through this otherwise it will be a waste of time so remember that book of Acts helps us that when we consider our approach to the law of Moses today and how do we know as a Christian that we are not bound by it and this is a question that you know many Christians uh, are confused that are we under the law are we under grace and there are so many Christians I said I above 80 to 90 percent of the Christians they are still living under law and trying to do few things from the uh, from the law and uh, trying to please God by doing some things remember that you cannot take pieces here and there in the word of God as you choose uh, Remember that if you want to ask a question that those people who know me, they, they know this answer. But uh, those people, but if you want to know a, a person who claims to be a servant of God, you can ask a question that how many laws are there in the Bible? 
and uh, if i ask you the same question i know very few of you can understand it's not 10 but remember the law of moses had 613 different requirements and uh, remember so we need to be very clear that whether we are free from these laws or not so if you ask a question many people will ask you so many questions to know what you know the word of god you ask this one question to that person do you know how many laws are there in the word of god remember it's not 10 laws it's 613 laws are there and uh, we need to know it is very important that whether we are whether or not these are still binding but the answer comes as we read about the great argument concerning circumcision which reached a climate in Acts chapter 15 when it was settled once and for all that Christians are free from the law of Moses and tough still though still bound by the law of Christ. Remember that Acts is therefore an important source of information and explanation but it is clearly more than that too you need to see it as a model of church life everywhere remember that if the gospel or the epistles give independent attestation that the happening in question was a normal part of christian that at that time it is pretty certain that we can accept it today for example like in when we read in acts 2 23 that speak of the spirit being poured out joel 2 28 from the old testament and uh, titus 3 6 in the new testament confirm this as a term of general validity remember the bible provides a sufficient model that is ultimate standard by which to judge all other ages so book of acts gives us a model of what the early churches the church member did and what they were so remember that when we analyze that how the new testament church should be how a new testament believer should be the we need to see it in the book of acts that was the new testament church you can see there and we need to be very careful that when we teach a church, when we put the laws upon them, we should be very careful that are we putting the church or the members of the church under law or we are still giving them the right word of God, that is we are under grace. And uh, remember when we read from book of Acts chapter 15 verses 22 to 20, 31 today, I will be talking less, the word of God will be talking more. But I believe that God will speak to you through this message. Acts chapter 15 verses 22 uh, to 31, it says, Then the apostles and elders together with the whole church in Jerusalem chose delegates and they sent them to Antioch of Syria with Paul and Barnabas to report on this decision. The men chosen were two of the church leaders, Judas, who was also called as Barsabas, Barsabas and Silas. This is the letter they took with them. Now many of the people, when last time I had shared this message, many of the people they messaged me that this was only for the people of Antioch, Syria. But remember, there are letters written only for Corinth church. But still that letter applies to us. Am I right or wrong? So it is not that people who are skeptical, they will always say, okay, that book was written only for uh, for the Corinth church, so it doesn't apply to us. You know, that is not how the, the way you should take the word of God. And many people, they said that this is only for those people in Syria where the reports were taken, it doesn't apply to us. So remember, the devil will always try to manipulate, but remember that word of God demonstrate and gives very clarity that how a New Testament believer should be. And it says in verse 23, this letter is from the apostles and elders, your brothers in Jerusalem. It is written to the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria and Cilicia, greetings. We understand that some men from here have troubled you and upset you with their teaching, but we did not send them. So we decided, having come to complete agreement, to send you officials representative along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are sending Judas and Silas uh, to confirm what we have decided concerning your question. For it seemed good 
to the Holy Spirit and to us. Remember, it is very important what it is saying. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit. They are not saying that it seemed good to us. That's what many pastors, leaders, lot of organization people, the, the top head uh, leaders, they think what they seem right. Here, when they give a law or when they're saying something to follow, the first thing is it seemed good. To the Holy Spirit. How many of you, if you're listening as a servant of God, how many of you take decisions on the basis of uh, what the Holy Spirit says? Or do you take decisions on the basis of what you feel? Verse 28, it says, For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay no greater burden on you than these few requirements. You must abstain from eating food offered to idols from consuming blood or the meat of strangled meat strangled animal and from sexual immorality if you do this you will do farewell the messenger went at once to antioch where they called a general meeting of the believers and delivered the letter and there was great joy throughout the church that day as they read this encouraging message remember when holy spirit gives a message people will receive it gladly there will be will be joy but when any rules and regulations are given by people there will be strife there will be confusion many of you are watching and you will be thinking that somebody gave you a word of knowledge and after listening to that word of knowledge or prophecy you are just confused Remember, that is not the word of God. That's not the true spirit. If Holy Spirit will tell you something, there will be joy in your life. There will be clarity in your life. But remember, verse uh, 29, last part, it says, if you do this, uh, you will do well. That's all. Three things. Uh, no I, uh, food uh, offered to idols. Uh, no eating meat. Uh, with blood st of strangled animal and third sexual immorality so if you can't eat food uh, offered to idols then remember that you can't do also idol worship so it is very simple very plain and i believe that when we keep things simple remember it is that's why i say that christian life is a simple life it's very simple we complicate it and i know you will say brother what about uh, uh, praying what about fasting what about uh, second coming what about uh, seventh seal remember all those are important but the word of god says this these things if you do these things it is well with you that is very important beloved these are the things you follow slowly slowly the fruit of the holy spirit will work and the, when holy spirit works slowly slowly you will see a change in your life so first thing first dangerous thing that a christian must not practice is idol worship Speaking of the Ten Commandments, most of us know the second commandment. Exodus chapter 20 verses 4 to 5 it says, you shall, you shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of any in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water below. You shall not bow down to them or worship, or worship them. Remember, you will, it says that it's fairly clear, isn't it? No idols period end of discussion that means don't make them don't bow to them or don't worship them but remember that idolatry is worshiping anything that ought to be used or using anything that ought to be worship with that definition remember that education can become your idol beauty in whatever form can be idolized money can become an idol and i tell you it is very clear in today's body of christ mammon is being preached mammon is being worshipped mammon is being seeked after and that is happening remember that uh, technology certainly is a major idol in the present society and remember even sometimes the church and the religion can become an idol that when people they focus so much of doing something super spirituality stuffs so these things also can become idols in your life remember these are gifts of God means to an end but uh, idolaters 
when made end in themselves remember it is remember that god gives uh, us as gifts this uh, education beauty money technology it is all as a gift but what happens that we make those uh, things into an idol and destroy the plan of god when we read matthew chapter 22 verses 33 to 40 it says uh, teacher what is the most important commandment of the law of moses Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on two, on these two commandments. It's so simple. You said, you will say just now, you said we are not under law. So why you quoted Exodus? Remember, same thing, the Ten Commandments, uh, Jesus converted into two, which fulfill all the laws that you love the Lord, your God with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind. And second is love your neighbor as yourself. Beloved, if these things are very simple, Simple. Christian life is simple but uh, first thing if you believe in Jesus if you don't believe in Jesus and you expecting you want to believe in Jesus first and priority is that no idol worship second dangerous thing a Christian must not practice or somebody who believes in Jesus must not practice is uh, is uh, abstain from food offered to idols acts 15 28 29 it seemed it says for it seemed good to the holy spirit and to us to lay no greater burden on you than these few requirements you must abstain from eating food offered to idols from consuming blood or the meat of strangled animal and sexual immorality if you do this uh, you will do well farewell remember it's very clear that you should not eat food given to idols uh, and many times you will say we go to shops and everywhere there is food offered to idols remember there are two things one thing is uh, something you do knowingly second something you do unknowingly that's why when whatever thing you get in market wherever you go if you don't know is it offered to idols or not just pray over it and say lord i i sprinkle your blood on this lord i make it holy by your precious blood in jesus name amen that's all that's all you have to do and there is no work on that uh, food uh, will affect you remember that uh, that even if anybody gives you a poison without your knowledge to kill you to destroy you it will not affect you because you're children of god you're a child of god but that doesn't mean you go to a chemist right now and you take poison and you say because bible say i will drink and i will not die that is called uh, overconfidence beloved there is things that you need to maintain balance uh, in your life uh, Third thing, the third dangerous thing a Christian must not practice, a believer in Christ must not practice is sexual immorality. Acts 15, 28, again I'll read, it says, For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit to lay to us to and to us to lay no greater burden on you than these few requirements. Uh, you must abstain from eating food offered to idols, from consuming blood or the meat of strangled animal, and from sexual immorality. If you do this, you will do well. Farewell. Genesis uh, 2.24 tells us that why a man leaves his father and mother is joined to his wife and uh, they are they are two the two are united into one when we read first corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 it says now regarding the question you asked in your letter yes it is good to ex uh, abstain from sexual relations there the remember when you read the letters it is only one side it is very important that when you read a letter you know you need to know what the opposite person is saying here we can see only what uh, paul is replying we don't know what the questions were somewhere it shows what the question might be here we can know that uh, regarding the question you asked in your letter yes it is good to abstain from sexual relationship what must be the question it, it question may be that is it good to abstain from sexual relations so paul is saying yes it is good to abstain from sexual relation and then the verse to it said but because there is so much sexual immoral immorality each man should have his own wife and each woman should have her own husband it doesn't say each man should have uh, the number of wives it says own wife it's not saying the neighbor's wife it's not saying the boss's wife it's not saying pastor's wife it's not saying your 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 brother's wife it's saying 
your own wife and same to women it says to have her own husband not your best friend's husband not your neighbor's husband not your colleague's husband remember that it's a word of god is very to the point you need to understand that third verse is said the husband should fulfill his wife's sexual need and the wife should fulfill her husband need the wife give authority over her body to her husband and the husband gives authority over his body to the wife do not deprive each other of sexual relation unless you both agree to refrain from sexual in in intimacy for a limited time so that you can give yourself more completely to prayer afterwards you should come together so that satan won't be able to tempt you because of your lack of self control remember it says one thing that it is a responsibility of a husband to to fulfill his wife's sexual desires so the same way it is wife's Uh, responsibility that she should fulfill her husband's need but remember as the fourth verse says that we both uh, have the given authority to each other over as a uh, authority of husband gives uh, authority of his body to wife and wife's body authority to, to husband but fifth verse remember it is a uh, very important it says do not deprive each other of sexual relations remember there are many of you maybe there may be wife there may be husband you know that when you are angry when you when you take want to take out that khunnas you know you want you are angry with your husband what you will say you will say i have a headache i don't want i don't want and you, you will deprive or your husband of uh, sex you will deprive your wife of having sex but it says uh, that do not deprive if you it is very important it's see sex is not something spiritual sex is chemical as you feel hungry you eat sex is also like an appetite so if you want it you have your wife god has given your wife god has given your husband enjoy it just like you enjoy biryani when you are hungry you want biryani just enjoy same like that you have to enjoy sex but it is very important that you don't deprive each other i know many of you are listening you take out that anger on your husband by depriving him of sex and and i know husbands that when you are angry even your wife on you will not give her that is one of the wicked thing that 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 shows that the devil is ruling over your life but the word of god says that do not deprive each other of your sexual relation second unless you both agree to refrain from sexual intimacy for a limited time so you, you can give yourself more completely to prayer so there is a possibility that husband and wife they will say okay i am praying for for 10 days 7 days and we don't i don't we don't sh we shouldn't be uh, like having sexual intercourse but that doesn't mean uh, that uh, during prayer if you have sex that sin it's not saying like that but if you want to just completely give yourself limited time so that you can give yourself completely to prayer so you want to pray 24/7 and you don't don't want to have sex that is mutually it should not be that husband says okay god the spirit of the lord told me not to have sex so whether you like it or not i will not do that is not the way. it said mutually it says unless you both agree both agree that is very very important not one of you both agree but remember what it says afterward you should come together again it is very important there are people they have refrain and they said i will not do i will not take i will not do this and i want to be super spiritual i want to be like an angel and all those stuff brought by the devil but word of god said you have to come together so that satan won't be able to tempt you because of your lack of self control remember you and i we are humans we have lack of control and i tell you why men go after another woman because they don't get what they should get with their own wife so as a wife if you don't fulfill your husband's need husband will go for someone else as a husband if you don't take care of your wife remember the wives will go after someone and it's they're not their mistake as a human suppose if you are a human and you're feeling hungry you're not getting food at your home what you will go what you will do you will go to a restaurant and eat food same way sex is an appetite you need it i need it everybody needs it but but if it if anybody doesn't get it 
remember the devil will tempt because of lack of self control and god knows that we have a lack of self control that's why husband and wife if you are listening remember it is your responsibility for each other and if you mess up do not uh, do not say it's because of devil if your husband is not faithful it's because you didn't play your part uh, devil played in your marriage so enough of uh, third point uh, sexual immorality now the fourth dangerous thing a christian must not practice or a believer in christ must not practice is judging others and if you're listening me uh, my videos you know that i put more emphasis on this that don't judge others matthew chapter 7 verses 1 to 3 it says do not judge others and you will not be judged for you will be treated as you treat others the standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged and why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own remember matthew 7:16 it says you can identify by their fruit that is by the way they act beloved if you open your mouth and just you just uh, judge your prime minister you judge your the, the political party you judge your boss you judge everybody just when you open your mouth you are a jun- judgmental freak i will say that all the time you just want to uh, judge everybody oh this is not do how they do but what about your life what about your life what you did out of your life remember you have no audacity to judge your prime minister or anybody because what they are doing they are doing in their time what god has chosen them to do it is better you shut your mouth and you pray and ask the lord to give you the wisdom that what to say then you judge here and there but remember that you will be judged on the same standard so stop judging others that is the fourth thing that is dangerous thing what you are doing you have no idea remember that you will be treated as you treat others you may be thinking maybe that boy that person going on the road side the way you treat him or her none of your business but remember the way you treat a person it is not saying uh, treat your your family or relatives that the way you will be treated as you you for you will be treated as you treat others that's it it's not saying only the believers it's not saying unbelievers it's saying others so remember be careful how you treat others uh, fifth dangerous thing a christian must not practice or a believer in christ must not practice is super spirituality remember god hates prideful people god cannot work in prideful people god is looking for humble people colossians chapter 2 verses 18 and 19 it says don't let anyone anyone condemn you by insisting on pious self denial or the worship of angels saying they have had visions about these things their sinful minds have made them proud and they are not connected to christ the head of the body for he holds the whole body together with its joint and ligaments and it grows as god nourishes it uh, when we read matthew chapter 23 from 1 it with there we can see that jesus criticizes the religious leader he says then jesus said to the crowd and to his disciple the teachers of religious law and the pharisees are the official interpreters of the law of moses so practice and obey whatever they tell you but uh, don't follow their example for they don't practice what they teach this is what is happening in today's world that many people when they open their mouth they are just uh, you know coming out with good good laws made by themselves uh, but they don't practice what they preach verse 4 it says they crush people with their unbearable religious demand and never lift a finger to ease the burden that is what is happening that uh, pastors are putting burdens on the congregation for his selfishness for his business they are he's putting a uh, burden on them asking them money 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 verse 5 it says uh, everything they do is for show on their arms they will wear extra wide prayer boxes with scripture verses inside and they will robes with extra long tassels and they love to sit uh, at the at the head table at banquets and in the seat of honor in the synagogue they love to re- receive respectful greeting as they walk in the marketplace and to be called uh, rabbi it is that is what happens you know when you go in a place anywhere and you are expecting people to call you uh, apostle prophet pastor 
but uh, that your expect expectation is people should greet you because you are something but remember that's the sign of a super spirituality you need to be humble may people call you what they want to call you you be right with god if these people they will pray long long prayers they will quote lot of scriptures uh, they will in their prayers they will show that they know the word of god but remember god is not are looking after those people god is looking after people who will beat their chest and say lord i no longer consider to be your son i am a sin sinner i need you in my life sixth dangerous thing a christian must not practice a believer in christ must not practice is that uh, disregard the word of god uh, remember second timothy chapter 3 verses 16 to 17 it says all scripture is inspired by god is useful to teach us what is true to make us realize what is wrong in our life it corrects us when we are wrong it teaches us to do what is right god uses us uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work remember it says it is inspired by god it is useful to teach us what is true to make us realize what is wrong in our life remember well if you see me i take lot of scriptures from the old testament but uh, but what about but what about the uh, we should be doing what they have done no it is there for a purpose why to teach us what is wrong to make us realize what is wrong in our life many things in the old testaments are there so that we can learn from them we can correct our life uh, the same mistakes david did uh, god doesn't want us to do the same mistakes so we should learn noah made the ark so do you think that god wants you to make an ark no but we should learn from noah's life uh, remember it corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right that is the purpose of the old testament and i'm i'm not saying that uh, there are a lot of things in the old testament and prophecy yet to happen but there are a lot of things that is already happen that's why you need uh, the the wisdom of the lord the holy spirit to help you to understand what is already done and what uh, is yet to be then remember the bible becomes a dead letter to those whose doctrine it condemns but in the word of paul here is the attitude towards the bible to those who respects uh, heaven's way that every word is inspired by god and there is every scripture in the word of god you will learn something and the best thing about the word of god is it's been so much time so much years centuries are going past but it is still same and it applies to the time the seventh uh, dangerous thing a christian must not practice a believer in christ uh, must not practice is uh, divorce remember the bible is very clear on this one no divorcing you can't do it uh, because when you marry someone and according to the mark chapter 10 verse 8 it says here uh, you are no longer two but one flesh uh, and mark chapter 10 verse 9 it, it says what therefore god has joined uh, together let uh, no man separate mark gets even more hardcore about it a few verses later in mark chapter 10 verse 10 to 12 which says and he said to them whosoever divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her and if she herself divorces her husband and marries another man she is committing adultery remember when you go to a marriage you may be thinking that so many pastors are doing that so many christian people have uh, gone through a divorce i know many of them have remember and i am not saying that uh, because they have done uh, gone through divorce they are going to hell god's grace and mercy is bigger than their sin there is no sin that god cannot forgive but that doesn't mean i am saying you can divorce but what i mean to say is if you have done mistake if you unknowingly or knowingly you have done that it is time that you forgive each other if there is a scope that you can come together come together but if uh, there is a scope that there is you can't come together you ask forgiveness from the lord and i believe that god will forgive you but remember that there it is no choice like if you think that once you got married you can divorce that is sin that is sin that is sin that is clear only in two conditions you can remarry first thing 
is that when your husband and wife uh, if uh, if one of the spouses have committed adultery in when being in marriage and you have the solid proof about that that is one way that you can uh, give divorce and marry second is death that's it apart from that there is no any laws uh, given in the word of god and i pray that if you are going to think about doing that to may god give you his understanding to uh, understand the word of god better and remember that uh, that god hates uh, divorce uh, the eighth dangerous thing a christian must not practice a believer in christ must not practice is praying to dead people revelation 1 chapter 17 to 18 it says when i saw him i fell at his feet as if i were dead but he lay it his right hand on me and said don't be afraid i am the first and the last i am the living one i died but uh, look i am alive forever and ever i hold the keys of death and the grave remember we believe in jesus who is same yesterday today and forever and he's saying that i am the living one yes he died uh, but he rose again many people they worship somebody who was alive now dead but we believe in someone who was dead is and is now alive that is why we say he is the god of abraham isaac and jacob that means they are alive somewhere but remember that we shouldn't be praying to the dead people remember that there is no biblical teaching at all that states we are to pray to those who once were alive on earth and now in heaven biblically prayer is always offered to god and is a form of worship prayer is a humble petition to the lord prayer is offered to god never to any created thing and to do so is to offer worship that should only be directed to god which is idolatry remember that prayer should be offered only to god remember the god the father is the only one who has the full supernatural power to answer any of our specific prayer request remember that god has it set up through his son's death on the cross that we are to approach approach his throne and his throne alone with any of our specific prayer request he does not want us going to anyone else either in heaven above or on this earth remember that jesus said in john i am the way the truth and life nobody comes to the father but through me it is only and only through jesus if praying to the dead people was allowed jesus would have said that but he didn't say anything he said on contrary he said i am the way the truth and life you need to understand something that uh, anything when you it is it if when you do something which is not uh, said in the bible you are disregarding disrespecting the word of god ninth point uh, ninth dangerous thing which a christian must not practice a believer in christ must not practice is uh, praying same thing over and over again Matthew chapter 6 verses 7 to 8 it says when you pray don't babble on and on as people of other religions do they think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again don't be like them for your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask them it is very important when you pray when you open your mouth your your when you open your mouth your mouth should be open for those who are in need pray for each other that's what the word of god says uh, you need to pray for your family for your family's relative friends your relative friends but uh, but don't think that because you say something 10 times 100 times uh, your prayers will be answered fast uh, last but not the least 10th uh, dangerous thing a christian must not practice a believer in christ must not practice is being earthly minded colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 4 it says since you have been raised to new life with christ set your sights on the realities of heaven where christ sits in the place of honor at god's right hand think about the things of heaven not the things of earth for you died to this life and your real life is hidden with christ in god and when christ and when christ who is your life is revealed to the whole world you will share in all his 
glory remember we are just sojourners here brother beloved and i want to tell you something doesn't matter how much you have here what matters is what you have lost uh, for the kingdom of god that is very important anything and everything you lose here in earth for god remember it's a gain for you in heaven when we read matthew chapter 6 verses 19 to 34 remember there if we can see what uh, teaching about money and possession it says uh, that don't store up treasures here on earth uh, where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal store your treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal wherever your treasure is there the desires of your heart uh, also will be your eye is a lamp that provides light to your whole body when your eye is good your whole body is filled with life but when your eye is bad your whole body is filled with darkness and if the light you think you have is actually darkness how deep that darkness is uh, no one can serve two masters for you will hate one and love the other you will be devoted to one and despise the other you cannot serve both god and money that is why i tell you not to worry about everyday life whether you have enough food or and drink or enough clothes to wear isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing look at the birds they don't plant or harvest or store food in their barns for your heavenly father feed them and they aren't you and aren't you far more valuable to him than they are cast uh, can all your worry cast all your worries at us can all your worries add a single moment uh, to your life uh, and why worry about your clothing look at the lilies of the field and how they grow they don't worry or make their clothing yet solomon in all his glory was not dressed uh, as beautifully as they are and if god uh, care so wonderfully for wild flower then are here that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow he will certainly care for you why do you have so little faith so don't worry about these things saying what will we eat what will we drink what will we wear these things dominate the thought of unbeliever these things dominate the thought of unbelievers but your heavenly fathers already know uh, all your needs seek the kingdom of god above all else uh, and live righteously and he will give you everything you need uh, seek the kingdom of god above all else uh, and live righteously and he will give you everything you need so don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worry today's trouble is enough for today remember it is very very important that you become kingdom minded matthew 6 verses 5 to 8 it says when you pray don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everybody can see them i tell you the truth that uh, that is all the rewards they will ever get uh, but when when you pray go away by yourself shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private then your father will see everything will reward you when you pray don't babble on and as other peoples of other religions do they think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again don't be like them for your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask matthew 18 19 it says i also tell you this if two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask my father in heaven will do it for you john 14 13 14 it says you can ask for anything in my name and i will do it so that the son can be glory can bring glory to father yes ask me for anything in my name and i will do it for you remember that don't be kingdom don't be earthly minded but be kingdom minded beloved remember that god is watching you doesn't matter how many the digits you have in your account uh, but maybe your account in heavenly treasure will be nil so it is important beloved it is very important that you do 
what God asks you to do for the kingdom of God. Uh, remember, you can gain the whole world and if you lose your soul, what will it benefit? I believe this uh, message has blessed you. I never thought that it will go too long. But I, I tell you these things, if you keep on uh, reminding yourself in these 10 things, I know there are many, but uh, when I was, uh, I was going through the stuffs in internet, there are so much, nothing biblical is there. All they are concerned about uh, wearing gold, uh, doing makeups, uh, wearing good clothes and all those stuffs are there, but nothing biblical is there. But uh, God asked me to, to do this because I believe through this message uh, there is a work of God is going to happen in your life and if you're watching this video and you have heard completely this video I want to tell you that it's a sign that the Holy Spirit is uh, working in your life uh, and uh, if you're watching me for the first time consider subscribing and hit the bell icon let us pray mm -hmm. father god we come to thy presence in this wonderful time master lord we come to the throne of grace thank you for all the good things you have done in our life master lord help us to become a person you desire us to be through our life through our character christ we see no work of the devil no work of the evil one prevail upon their life in the name of jesus lord help them to become a kingdom minded uh, uh, person master no work of the devil prevail upon their life lord you're doing it for that i thank you you increase we decrease through our life let alone your name be glorified help us to become a person you desire us to be through our life through our character christ be seen in jesus precious name we pray amen 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 i believe this message has blessed you if this message has blessed you see to it that you share this message with your loved ones with your friends and uh, god willing uh, maybe in the month of january we are praying uh, to come to dubai and if you are watching me from dubai get in touch with us we are still waiting we we are praying for the be some place we are praying for people and um, got lot of uh, invitation but they are single persons so we are praying for a church to invite us and we believe that uh, uh, if it is god's will surely will god will open a way so if you have a church you want us to come in Dubai uh, in the month of January. God willing, uh, we will be in Dubai. And already the process for uh, um, Brisbane is going on. And uh, and uh, the, today it will be uh, for the visa file will be submitted. Keep it in your prayers. I will be uh, keep on uh, posting the updates about these meetings. And uh, anywhere in the world, if you're watching me, you want us to come. Surely we would love to come and feel free to contact and just uh, you will get my details in the description and uh, I believe uh, if you're using an Android phone or an Apple phone uh, you can download my app app name is Evans Francis and uh, if the Lord leads you become a pillar of fire or pillar of cloud of our small ministry may God bless you may his face shine upon you may he enable you to to overcome these uh, 10 dangerous things in your life and i believe that god is going to strengthen you holy spirit is going to help you to overcome your uh, uh, your sins uh, which you are falling again and again may god bless you shalom